if it's pitch darkness you don't call it afternoon in most cases you call it night and sometimes if you don't have the luxury of looking at a timepiece a clock you literally have to depend on light to help you estimate and sometimes you are able to estimate with precision what time of the day you can literally look at the sun shining at its brightest and know that this should be between 12 to 2 a.m and without prophesying you get it right so light can determine seasons light can define moments in time and destiny and we looked at uh, a few things last week particularly zooming down on the creation of man we took man's creation to help us define how we should function uh, in dominion the essence of the teaching last week particularly was to begin to help us understand the foundational components of dominion we said that man was created in the image of god still remember and the likeness of god and we said the image of god talks of his spiritual quality the nature of god are we together as revealed in christ and then the likeness of God talks about the functionality, the functionality, how to function like Christ, not just the form. It talks about the form, two hands, two feet, one head. But beyond that, it talks of the way God functions. And we took our time to say that no believer will walk in dominion if you veer off out of this architecture. Man was designed to function in a certain way. And that the first part of call is that every man must press to see that image find visible expression and i did tell us that the image of god is a compendium of his nature as revealed in his character what we have come to know as the fruit of the spirit that the fruit of the spirit is the resultant um product of that inner working of the holy spirit through the recreated human spirit and that essentially the fruit of the spirit is love manifested as joy peace patience and so on and so forth i told us that the fruit of the spirit is not just a virtue it is an atmosphere the ideal atmosphere designed for man to thrive is called the fruit of the spirit we challenged ourselves by considering how that the deficiency of just one expression of the fruit of the spirit is what has caused a lot of damage in our world for instance the absence of joy hospitals are managing patients in their variety because of depression and a lot of other things just one the absence of one expression of the fruit of the spirit and i did tell us that man's ideal state that allows for maximum uh, optimized function is to function within that zone called the fruit of the spirit then we looked at the likeness of god how to function like god and we said when it has to do with functioning like god you have to understand that the modus operandi in the kingdom is the word of god the word of god is the foundational basis for functioning like god you still remember that if you do not have access to the word of god the speakings of god there is no basis to be able to function like god because in the kingdom everything the believers walk if is to be like god as revealed in christ it must be by the word man shall not live by bread alone matthew 4 4 but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of god hallelujah and we said how that when you want to function like christ uh, there are three dimensions to that operation number one you must learn to speak like christ the first way to function like Christ is to speak like Christ. Hallelujah. Speak like Christ. Now I've lost the scripture. There's a scripture coming in my heart. Is it Isaiah 2.20? I cannot remember. And if they do not speak after this manner, it says it is because there is no light in them. Very powerful scripture. Uh, uh, media, help me if you can. I think that's um, Isaiah or so, 2.20 or thereabout. If you don't find it, that's fine. That if they do not speak after this manner, it is because there is no light. Thank you. 820. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. That means those who are possessors of light, there is a way that they speak. Hallelujah. 
Number two, the second way we function like God has revealed in Christ is obedience. 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 And obedience is not valid until there is an instruction to obey. The Bible says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. And that mindset was the mindset of obedience, obedience even unto death. And that there are rewards to obedience. Wherefore God had so highly exalted him, giving him a name, an office that is above every other name. And that at that name, every knee should bow, every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. And the third way we learned to function like God as revealed in Christ is sacrifice sacrifice hallelujah greater love had no man than this than a man lay down his life for his friend i beseech thee brethren by the mercies of god romans 12 and verse 1 that ye offer your bodies unto god a living sacrifice holy and acceptable he calls it your reasonable act of worship and so i'm just doing a quick recap because it's important that we connect um we're dealing with the matters that help us to walk in dominion the nature of Christ producing the Christ-like character and that nature, that virtue of the Spirit and then functioning like Christ. So part two would take it a step further. And um, like I said, the subject of altars, you'll be learning. Um, I've discussed a few things in time past about the altars, but um, my concern now is what to omit and what to leave. And so I decided to zoom down on just one area for the purpose of this series, I believe that would take an extended time to deal with the subject of altars because in my opinion, I think that there is a lot of ignorance among believers and one of Satan's advantage, please lend me your attention, one of Satan's advantage as far as um, cutting short the glory of the saints is to deceive the saints into believing that um, realities just because they have been wrought in Christ they are automatically finished and executed by default they are finished but not yet executed there are rules of engagement as you'll be learning hallelujah so this is very important Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10 we're looking at tearing down altars this will be part two of greater light tearing down altars i want to teach you how to enforce liberty in the spirit see i have said this day i have said this day i have this day said thee over the nations and over the kingdoms watch the assignment now to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant let's read together now ready one to go see i have this day set thee over the nations uh-huh and over the kingdoms number one and 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 then it says to build and to plant second samuel second samuel verse 20 chapter 24 and verse 25 glory be to the name of the lord let's read together one to go and david built there an altar unto the lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings so the lord was entreated for the land and the plague was stayed from israel May the Lord open our eyes in the name of Jesus. Now, just as a background for tonight's discussion, the kingdom operates in mysteries. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven operates in mysteries. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11. Jesus was teaching and he said, It has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom, he calls them. But to them, those who are without it is not given. The kingdom of God and its operations are hidden in mysteries. And there is an explanation for that. Um, I have taught you that a mystery is a secret code of operation that is only privy to a people who are part of a group. Are we together now? For instance, the police force. 
they have a way they operate they have a modus operandi if you are not a police officer trained to understand their language their gestures their codes you may be at a loss whereas communication intelligent communication is happening around you if you're a military man they have their modus operandi they have a way that they speak they have a way that they communicate such that if you claim to be a military man there are questions they will ask you and in one minute they know you are not because it will be impossible to be a military man well trained and not understand that modus operandi are we learning now so they are called mysteries mysteries hidden codes of operation that i are privy to a group of people and among the many reasons why god decided to keep truths light as a mystery is because handling the truths of the kingdom has consequences and demands maturity listen carefully handling the mysteries of the kingdom demand maturity there are consequences to it the mysteries of the kingdom is like holding on to electricity imagine allowing your two-year-old child to hold on to a high tension wire now you can imagine the kind of power that is generated from that high tension wire and yet the naive young child just comes to play and if it's a baby who most likely want to chew anything they hold in their hands if you give a little child a knife he's taking it straight to the mouth are we together because as far as they they understand everything is food they attempt to chew give them money they chew it give them whatever they chew it give them your hand they chew it give them you know whatever theirs is just to chew whatever comes to them it will be evil to know that the baby has those tendencies and then sharpen a razor blade and give it to the baby so you preserve it it is not out of the house it is kept somewhere and as the child grows and demonstrates growth through capacity you begin to introduce the child to other more sensitive matters this is why the mysteries of the kingdom are kept and your authorization to access them is your willingness to grow your maturity per time and per season are we together now so don't assume that just because the truths they are not hidden because god does not want you to know them no they are hidden to allow a certain version of you access them so when you press for growth he begins to release the truth the bible says line upon line are we together precept upon precept in layers you learn the rudiments of the kingdom. Once you are done, you begin to delve into weightier matters. The Bible lets us know that there are certain kinds of foundations. Hebrews chapter 6, you find that Paul was saying, having dealt with these foundational elementary things, he says, let us press further. Let us press deeper. Let us go to perfection. There are layers of truth like light. And one of them is what you'll be learning tonight. Are we together? It is amazing that there are many believers, and I say this with every sense of humility and respect, who are so ignorant as to the other higher levels of light and weightier spiritual matters. They just live as victims of the consequences of exchanges that happen in the spirit, exchanges that happen within their environment. They have not sustained the know-how nor the maturity to participate in deciding their lot in life. I'm praying for someone in the name of Jesus that as you hear the truths that I'm bringing to you, may your eyes be open. And may you handle this level of truth that will scale you into dominion in experience. You believe that shout a loud amen. Amen, amen and amen. So let's see how God will grant us grace as we deal with this topic. Um, there are a few foundational truths I want to put very quickly and then I'll make some recaps. My focus is to teach you how to tear down and to build altars. But uh, the average believer is at a loss completely as to the matters of altars. And the idea that comes to someone, an average believer who may not be trained, uh, when we talk about altars the first thing we think about is monuments that are built are seen uh, you know through the bible or are seen in many cultural practices but it's a lot more than that as you'll be learning so please walk with me as we quickly run through the elementary truths that we need to know so that uh, we deal with the core of our matter tonight and we pray i hope you came ready to pray hallelujah 
now foundational truth number one satan only has an advantage over the saints on three grounds satan has an advantage over the saints only on three grounds it's important you know this that every time you see satan attempt to strike destroy oppress any individual any family any believer for that matter even if in christ there are only three grounds as revealed in the bible that authorize satan or gives him a loophole into the life and destiny of believers number one ignorance please write that down number one ignorance the first ground upon which satan can met out his rebellious activities his activity of stealing killing and destroying in the life of believers is called ignorance number two disobedience disobedience these are foundational truths you must understand number one ignorance number two disobedience number three covenants that satan has only three grounds upon which he attempts to deal with the saints number one ignorance ignorance of the truth the ways of god number two disobedience refusing to comply with the terms that commit god number three covenants of all of these three the most far-reaching in terms of his effects are covenants the reason is because in many regards ignorance has a personal consequence to an individual and most often stops at the individual disobedience can affect an individual perhaps extends to a few people but covenants are transgenerational that means even when the individual who was actively involved in setting up that system is no longer there it becomes a law that the realm of the spirit recognizes no matter how long are we together now this is very powerful ignorance disobedience and covenants the bible is scattered all through mentioning the subject of altars and we see the patriarchs from genesis down even to the new testament the ideas may change but the the concept of covenant has remained consistent all through scripture we'll just walk through a few scriptures just to give you a scriptural frame that this subject of covenant is scriptural is deep and demands anybody who wants to walk in dominion and understand this business of victory victory over demonical forces walking in the blessing of the lord in experience it is impossible no matter who you are you cannot reign in life if you do not understand altars genesis 8 20 that is the first mention in the bible of the word altar so we'll run through a few scriptures to give you um, a doctrinal understanding the bible says and noah builded an altar you have that word there unto the lord and he took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings where on the altar genesis chapter 12 and verse 7 please walk with me as we write the lord appeared unto abraham and said unto your seed watch this now unto your seed will i give this land and the bible says in response to what god said abraham did not just say i receive and then to start dancing around he, the bible says he built an altar in honor to that statement who appeared unto him genesis 13 from verse 8 genesis 13 from verse 8 did i get that right I think I must have missed something. Uh, let's go to Genesis 26 and verse 25. My apologies on that. Genesis 26, 25. This is Isaac now. The Bible says, and he builded an altar. Are you seeing that now? That Abraham taught his son Isaac that the way dominion happens in this kingdom is by understanding altars. Isaac built an altar there 
and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tents there and there Isaac's servant built a well. It was about a well but he focused on an altar. It was about a well, digging a well to make for sufficiency but not without an altar. Genesis chapter 35 and verse 7. Genesis 35 and verse 7. And he built there an altar and called the place El Bethel because there God appeared to him when he fled from the face of his brother. This is Jacob now. We see the concept of altars. You see Abraham, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. These are models. Every single one of them was taught that dominion within their time cannot happen without the awareness and to know how to engage this mystery of altars. Who is learning already? I'm showing you consistent in scripture. First Samuel chapter 14, please, and verse 35. 1 Samuel 14 and verse 35. Now we get to Saul, and the Bible says, And Saul built an altar unto the Lord, from Noah to Abraham to Isaac to Jacob, down the line. I just jumped this for reference. I can show you literally in almost everyone who did business with God, everyone who became mighty and commanded every level of dominion there was an altar go ahead please give us that scripture he built an altar unto the lord the same was the first altar that he built unto the lord and of course we considered already second samuel chapter 24 and verse 25 david now there was a plague over the land israel and people were dying and there was, I mean, there was defeat imminent. And he said, no, this is not about being a warrior or not. There must be something. Ah, you will learn a lot tonight. May God open your eyes. The Bible says, and David, as a cure to the plague, he built an altar and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land and the plague stayed from Israel. What is an altar? What is an altar? Let's recap on a few definitions very quickly. An altar is a place, a platform, or a system. A place, a platform, or a system where the spirit realm makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds. An altar is a place, an altar is a platform, an altar is a system where the spirit realm makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds. On legal grounds. I'm reminded of Luke chapter 1, I think from verse 10 to 11. Luke chapter 1, 10 and verse 11. Luke 1. The Bible says the whole multitude of the people were praying without outside at the time of incense. Verse 11. There appeared unto him the angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. The angel came and he was standing at the right side of the altar. There was a basis for the angel to visit. Are we together now? Now, there are deeper explanations, but I'm cutting a lot of things because I want us to quickly get to the business of what we need to deal with tonight. But it's important for you to know that when we talk about the word altar, don't allow the word to just create a lot of complications. It means a place. It means a platform. It also means a system where the realm of the spirit and the physical realm make contact on legal or legitimate basis but spare me five minutes let's do some prayer please rise up on your feet i'll give you three quick prayer points prayer point number one father if there is any legal basis upon which satan will lay claim on my life i advocate the blood right now please go ahead and pray if there is any legal basis if there is any legal basis the psalmist said if i cherish iniquity in my heart 
the Lord would not hear me go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus take a minute to pray every legal basis the sin of commission the sin of omission I obtain mercy by God I obtain mercy by God sins of bloodline I obtain mercy by God